How do you identify a female narcissist? Not only do they tend to fly under the radar a little more often than male narcissists, but their toxic behaviors are often attributed to the fact that they're a mother or that they're more emotional than their male counterparts, among other things. But trust me when I tell you that they are just as toxic as any other narcissist, if not more so. We're going to talk about it. You might already know that narcissists in general, regardless of their sex, will continuously manipulate you to get what they want. They usually show certain symptoms pretty universally. These symptoms might include grandiosity, an inflated sense of self-importance, and they do tend to feel superior to other people around them, whether or not they say that out loud. Since their feelings of superiority are typically bloated versions of the truth, most narcissists, whether they are male or female, will spend quite a lot of time focusing on reinforcing their fragile self-perceptions, and that tends to lead to various forms of manipulation. When a lot of people think about narcissism or narcissistic personality disorder, they think of men who are more often stereotyped as more violent or full of rage. And most narcissism experts will tell you that these stereotypes will often manifest in a narcissistic male when they do feel threatened that their source of supply will suddenly disappear or, if we're being honest, when they feel that they've been crossed in any way. But despite popular assumption, narcissistic women are just as toxic and nearly as plentiful. Studies vary on actual numbers and percentages, but in general, researchers estimate that just over half of all diagnosed narcissists are men. But those are diagnosed narcissists. And you and I both know that most people who have the toxic qualities of a narcissist, they're not likely to be diagnosed. With that being said, I personally think the numbers are probably pretty equal. In addition to the fact that narcissistic women slide under the radar a little too often because they are mothers or whatever, there's the fact that fewer men are willing to admit to themselves or anyone else that they might be being abused by a woman. For that reason, fewer women are reported and diagnosed with NPD. So what are the key identifiers of a narcissistic female? Well, clearly we have plenty of narcissistic women around the world. And if you are a child of a narcissistic mother, you probably already know how true that is based on your own firsthand experience. But whether or not your mother is or was a narcissist, you might not know the signs of a narcissistic female. So I'm gonna cover those for you right now. First up, women who have NPD will express anger differently than men with NPD. A lot of people will assume that the malignant narcissist who becomes explosive and aggressive must be male, right? That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, women with NPD can be the same. There are a shocking amount of physically and emotionally abusive women, and it doesn't only affect their children. Some women will even physically and or emotionally abuse their partners, male, female, or otherwise. They might also abuse their friends, coworkers, or subordinates at work, their siblings, their parents, or anyone they feel is less than or otherwise wrong in any way, to put it nicely. Some common ways female narcissists punish you for not doing what they want include withholding affection or attention, or by making you feel really guilty to the point that you really feel like you have no other choice other than to beg for their forgiveness. Sound familiar? They will gaslight you, manipulate you, sometimes covertly, but often blatantly and without remorse. And of course, as I said, many are physically abusive as well. Number two, women with NPD appear to be martyrs. These women are more likely to play the victim or the put upon martyr. They might even sacrifice more than is necessary or appear to at least in an attempt to get praise and attention from people around them. Plus they are certain and they expect you to know and recognize that their pain is worse than the pain of anyone else and that they suffer more than everyone else. To be fair, this is usually seen in women who might be considered more covert narcissists, but any narcissistic female can and often does display this trait. Number three, they're extremely superficial. Male narcissists are just as superficial as females, of course, and they both care a whole lot about image. But women, they're concerned more about their material items, such as having the best house, car, etc. in some cases, and they will brag about how wonderful their kids are, all the while telling their kids the opposite behind closed doors. They do this to hide their own insecurities, just like their male counterparts. They may or may not want designer, name brand, everything, and whatever they prefer, they will most definitely assume and act like the other choice is wrong. Let's talk about the female narcissist dress code number four. One more reason female narcissists do tend to fly under the radar so frequently is that a lot of us would expect all of them to at least attempt to appear attractive on some level. They are narcissists after all. We might expect they would appear to be overdone or expensively dressed, and we might think these women are the same ones we would see in the plastic surgeon's office to get their weekly Botox or whatever. Well, in some cases, we'd be absolutely right. But despite this unfortunate stereotype, women who care how they appear can be narcissists or not. See, the way a woman chooses to present herself 
yourself, it really has nothing to do with toxic narcissism. It's really all about their personality traits and specifically how they perceive and treat others in their lives. And let's just put it out there. Just as many female narcissists will judge women who focus on their appearance. And in those cases, these women might be very practical in their attire or even completely neglect their appearance. This is when you'll see them calling other women shallow or materialistic or worse. They will imply that these women are somehow less than them or beneath them because you know, they're attempting to get too much attention to put it politely. And then there are the female narcissists who are involved with certain types of religion or spirituality who may dress as dictated by their faith. In those cases, they will judge and feel superior to women who dress in other fashions. They'll even judge the women who are in the same faith, but who don't, in their opinion, follow all of the specific rules that religion requires. For example, if a religion says, don't cut your hair and a woman gets her ends trimmed, the narcissistic female might tell everyone she knows how that woman is a bad person because she got her ends trimmed. In other words, regardless of what her physical look happens to be, this woman will judge anyone who chooses to look different than she does. The narcissistic female is always right, no matter what. And I promise you, my friend, she will not hesitate to tell you all about it. Which brings me to number five. She's extremely jealous and competitive. Narcissistic women are highly competitive and they will become jealous very easily. They must be known as either the prettiest or most successful or most endearing or smartest or whatever their particular version of best happens to be. And watch out if you've got it going on yourself, my friend, because if you are a woman who makes them feel threatened in any way at all, they will most definitely viciously bully you and shame you and exile you from any social group if they can. They will even do this to their own daughters, often. You must remember that there are no limits to which a narcissist will not stoop to get their needs met. Which brings me to number five, the controlling mother or mother-in-law. While there are many cases of neglectful narcissistic mothers who just ignore or refuse to take care of their kids, a lot of them will also actively control them without concern for how they feel or what they want. They will aggressively or passive aggressively control the lives of their children. And this will continue even when their kids are adults, unless and until they do happen to figure them out and go no contact or low contact. They might decide maybe for example, your house isn't decorated right, so they'll rearrange your furniture for you without asking. Or they'll demand that you raise your kids in a certain way. Or that you discipline them in a certain way or don't discipline them in a certain way. Obviously, the way they prefer. And in many cases, narcissistic mothers-in-law, well, they will be painfully cruel to their daughters-in-law as they see them as someone who took their son away or who is trying to replace them. They will also actively compete with them in some pretty weird ways, just as they will with their own daughters. Also worth noting, the narcissistic mother will often prefer her male children to her female ones for this very reason, among others, and she's more likely to scapegoat her female child. But that isn't always the case. Male children can and are often scapegoated as well. So let's talk about what the research says about identifying narcissistic females versus narcissistic males. I read a study a while back that offered a few key findings of the major differences between male and female narcissists. And in my own experience, a lot of the findings seem to be true. So to begin with, the study said men will often use a lot of force directly or indirectly to sort of assert themselves and their superiority over other people, while women who are narcissists will more often take a different form. Usually they're a little bit more narcissistic injury or even seduction. What I mean is they're more likely than males to either use the old poor me martyr act mentioned earlier, or to use their appearance and their sexuality to manipulate people into getting what they want. Some of the study findings included some really interesting and pretty telling key differences. For example, male narcissists, but not female narcissists tend to use a face-saving tactic they call self-handicapping. This is defined as a course of action to protect or enhance one's self-evaluation in the face of an evaluation threat. What does that mean? In layman's terms, it means that male narcissists will try to appear confident, but if they fear they will fail, they will self-handicap in order to avoid having to perform at all. They will use this tactic to avoid feeling or seeming incompetent. So for example, let's say they're a tennis pro and they're gonna play tennis with a new partner. Well, to avoid humiliation and case the new partner wins, they might just claim that this is the first time they've ever played or they'll feign an injury to avoid playing at all. According to the study authors, this type of manipulation is directly connected to a failure in empathic responding by the mother, resulting in both males and females developing a deficient internalized structure of self. Strategies developed to compensate for it might take on different forms in males and females, the study said. This means, according to the authors, that mothers might be responding to boys as a significant 
other figure, as in as they would their husband, and to girls as more of an extension of self. It's kind of weird, right? The study authors continue to say, as a result, each gender uses different psychological resources to cope with the same deficient internalized structure of self. The study also noted that while male narcissists are likely to actively and openly assert their superiority over others in order to dominate them and for their own self-interest, they can get away with it because it's a lot more socially acceptable for males in most societies. But this kind of behavior from females is far less tolerated and it will not benefit them as much. So they are going to be a lot more subtle in most cases than their male counterparts with their particular brand of manipulation. It's another reason they slip under the radar so often. There are a few other points of note. Female narcissists will use their bodies to get what they want, as we mentioned, and in many cases, this does include their sexuality. Female narcissists are also more likely to have an eating disorder than male narcissists, unfortunately. Female narcissists will also be more likely to have issues with getting older, and that is especially true when they tend to use their bodies or sexuality to get what they want. These women are also more likely to secure their supply sources at home by controlling their family directly and using guilt to secure control. They tend to be less openly overconfident than their male counterparts who get a whole bunch of their overinflated confidence from inside their own heads. Females are more likely to take secret pleasure in their own perceived superiority over others. Men are more obvious about it. Female narcissists are also more likely to spend money frivolously, while males are more likely to believe that money gives them power, control, status, and related stuff. Neither concerns themselves with shame or remorse, of course. While both female and male narcissists are known to cheat, male Males are more likely to be serial adulterers. Females are more likely to idealize a guy and then emasculate him when they get them under their spell. Yeah. In both cases, the more their partners give, the more they want and the more they take from them. It's really an insatiable need for narcissistic supply. Male narcissists will often see their children as mostly a problem or an annoyance that gets in their way, as well as competition for the attention of their main forms of narcissistic supply, which usually includes their wives and mothers. While female narcissists are more likely to see the kids as more of an extension of self, even well into adulthood, unfortunately. So when the child does good things, narcissistic moms, they're gonna take credit for it. When they do bad things or things mom doesn't like, well, she's gonna take it real personally and maybe especially when whatever they did was obviously not related to the mother or her efforts in any way at all. You know the thing, right? Where they're like, oh, you did that to hurt me and you really didn't? Yeah. On the other hand, male narcissists are likely to more openly treat other men as rivals or competition, while females will more likely go nose to nose with other women in a more underhanded way, which often resembles friendship friendship to the untrained eye in other words they are lifelong mean girls while this list is certainly not all-encompassing it gives you a general overview of female narcissists and their differences from male narcissists with behaviors so this brings me to the question of the day and the question of the day is what do you think do you know a female narcissist or do you think you do and if so what were your experiences like what would you add to this list share your thoughts share your ideas share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it if you are the adult child of a narcissistic mother, you have a lot more questions, I am certain. And if that is the case, take a look at the playlist I'm going to leave for you right there and in the pinned comment below. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm gonna leave for you here and there and hit that subscribe button right over there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.